Hello friends! Welcome to our channel Creating Essence. I am Megan. We're going to give you our uh, October homestead update. It is the beginning of November now, so we're going to show you all uh, what was going on and what was growing for the month of October. First thing to mention, we got frost a month early. Uh, our zone is slated kind of for our first hard freeze uh, right about now, the first week of November. We got it the second week of October. <sighs> but realistically, we don't usually get the first frost until closer to Thanksgiving. We started getting hard freezes almost every night the second week of October. So, uh, we'll just say that put a damper on the uh, fall garden. I had all sorts of stuff planted. You will see it is sad now. The lavender is taken off. It had a little bit of a mess up. You'll see that one's much smaller. This one has some cut tops. I asked a child to go out and get me some specific herbs and uh, he mistook this for rosemary. Our potted thyme and lavender are done for the year. These were zucchini. They were just starting to put on fruit when the frost started coming. It's We haven't had frost, a hard frost, for a couple of nights now and it's trying to come back. So the roots are still alive and well, but things got pretty well frozen on the outside. Got some new blossoms coming on. We'll see if nature can make anything of this. In the earth garden is a pretty similar story. We have some herbs still coming on. This is oregano starting to do really well, which is awesome because I was terrible at getting herbs dried this year and I would love to get some oregano dried for the winter. The catnip uh, is doing well. Our tomatoes and basil down the center are all pretty well gone now, as are the peppers. We got a fantastic crop of jalapenos. We canned a bunch. Um, I'm making a fermented jalapeno hot sauce right now. We do have some nasturtium that is still growing. For the most part, it was frozen, but some is still trying. We have marigolds and peppers, lettuces that are still trying. This is some of the kale that we planted this spring. Still doing well. We've been fighting the good fight against all the different worms and moths and bugs that have been trying to eat it, but it's doing well. The radishes we had all through here are done. They didn't do very well. A lot of them bolted pretty quickly, but the chickens had a really nice feast of a big handful of radishes every day. This is our new crop of kale we just put in for the fall garden. It's doing very well. Get into a nice stage for some daily harvesting here. Our cauliflower is doing well. We have these, uh, these four that are still living. Yeah, the rest the other two were killed in the hurricane, but these four are doing pretty well. And over here we have our broccoli. The nasturtium I kind of let go wild. And it is beautiful and has been covering things so nicely, but it's starting to die back as it gets frozen. The broccoli is doing well. We have some nice baby heads coming on in there and in this one we have a bigger head there and we have some little side shoots coming on as well the savoy cabbages are doing well this one is still tiny i don't really know what's going on the watermelon vines i'm not sure if you can see the dead vines snaking all through here they were doing amazingly well and made it all the way over here and beyond and the frost killed them pretty immediately. Our peas are doing well. We didn't plant very many, just a few because the kids wanted them. So we did and they're doing really well. They uh, are a bit too heavy for the trellis that we put up for them. <laughs> a 
The zinnia are looking good for harvesting seed soon. All of these here, except the special purple ones, are grown from seeds that we saved last year. So I'm looking forward to saving them again for next year's zinnia. These savoys are doing really nicely. They're really robust and getting some good big heads in there already. And over here we have the zucchini plants and they have all pretty much died because of frost. But there is a rogue purple potato growing up here and one right there. This is, ooh, there's more potatoes. This is where we planted potatoes this past year and they did not do well. <laughs> But it looks like we missed some when we harvested because they're growing up now. So that'll be fun to see. So other than those hardy brassicas, the fall, the earth garden is pretty well done for the year. I've been working on getting the whole perimeter fence really solid, patching up any holes in this uh, deer mesh that we have on it around because we are about to put the chickens in here. See the chicken tractors there. We're taking it on one last spin up and around and bringing it down here so it will end by the gate right here. And then we're just going to park it right here so that it has extra wind protection from the shed there throughout the winter. And then we're gonna close it up and leave the door open so the chickens have the whole winter to turn up the garden. And you know, winter here is, oh, December and January, which is awesome. But it'll give them a good food source, lots to do. And it's perfect because the grasses are all dying off as they do here in Virginia. And then come February, we'll start running them around the yard again as things warm up and start growing. And then the garden will have time to rest before we get to planting in the end of March, beginning of April. We'll probably have to give them more grain uh, throughout the winter because they won't have the daily fresh grasses, but they will have a lot as far as grubs and things to dig up in the garden. So I'm kind of interested to see how that goes. The orchard bed is looking lovely, starting to lose its leaves on um, the peach tree and one of the elderberries. The cotton did amazing. We got so many seeds and it was so fun to grow. We're excited to grow it again next year. The apples are looking good. We still have so many garlic chives in here. And I've never grown garlic chives. I really just wanted it uh, for propagation. So, I think I might just leave it and watch and see what it does, but we've cut some for using in recipes and that's been a lot of fun. Hi girls! The girls are doing very well. They're predictably giving us like 15 to 18 eggs a day. Those, uh, those egg buckets. Quite the haul in them right now. I need to get in there and collect eggs for the day. Here on the other end of the bed, you will see this awesome little dill forest all through here, which is so cool to me because right here is the little spot where we had the dill this summer. I purposefully planted the different herbs and stuff in the garden or in the orchard bed to be good companion plants and things that gave the soil good nutrition or else were known to be something that a common pest of these things didn't like. Uh, so it would help for natural pest control and I had hoped to just sort of plant things once and then let them propagate throughout the orchard bed. And the dill's kind of a smashing success as far as that's concerned, so that's really exciting. Hi,
The blueberry bed is doing awesome. I've noticed that uh, these blueberries are putting off some blueberry babies here. So that's exciting to see them growing for the next year. The rosemary and sage and thyme all seem pretty well done for the year. The lilac is putting on some new leaves. But in general, he's getting ready to go to bed for the fall. We usually wrap uh, the lilac in burlap for the year. But we are we are still working on taking down this um, hedge here so that we can continue our Back to Eden style permaculture bed all the way down to about there. We've done the math and that'll mean putting in about six more blueberry bushes because we want to give the lilac a nice big space there. So we are really excited to extend that. And my garlic from Baker Creek is here and ready to be planted, which is perfect because this is looking awesome as far as good compost under here. So I am excited about that. And our strawberry beds, I did quite a bit of weeding and clean them out. They are looking happy and healthy and ready for winter. We have so many plans for expansion uh, in this coming year. I'm really, really excited about it. Lots of adding to what we already have and potentially building more as far as infrastructure. Other lilac is doing really well, growing really tall and getting, getting lots of new buds. And the raspberries are all doing amazing. I've got the last layer of grass clippings down and we're about to cover them with more wood chips to tuck them in for the winter. Which brings me to the last super exciting thing on the homestead. If you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen this, but let me show you. Wood chips! A big, beautiful pile, whole dump truck full, completely free. It's kind of hard to show you just how big it is, but that's, that's a good sized pile. And it's about five feet tall, so that is exciting. In the past, we've had to buy wood chips, but when we had this ornamental cherry tree taken down next to the house this spring, the arborist said, oh, well, if you want wood chips, I can, I can give you wood chips. And we're like, really? They don't go out of their way to bring us the wood chips when it, uh, they're not super close, but when they are super close and like literally driving by our street, they're happy to just bring us a load of wood chips completely for free. And it's the really good stuff mixed with like the leaves and greens and stuff that is awesome for composting and in general, the Back to Eden uh, style garden. And I think that is it for today. If you have any questions, let me know in the, in in the comments below. I would love to chat with you. Let me know if you have anything growing or if you're tucking your things in for the winter too. And if you already have plans for next spring, let me know what those are as well. I would love to hear. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this. Bye friends.